What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Thank you for clicking onto this reaction. I hope you're looking forward to it just as much as I am. If you haven't already, head over to the content creators page. That link is in the description box down below. If you haven't already and you're enjoying our content, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but we're gonna jump straight into this one. Europe ablaze, the 1848 revolutions. Let's go. 1848, more than three decades after his defeat, the shadow of Napoleon Bonaparte and the French Revolution still looms over Europe. A mighty big the shadow peace settlement of 1815 had been a triumph for reactionary forces. Europe's great powers, Britain, France, Austria, Prussia and Russia, were committed to working together to ensure no more revolutions. Radicalism and republicanism would not be allowed to disturb the peace of Europe again. <laughs> man's head. Imagine just Austrian holding a man's head. Prince Clemens That's von Metternich is <laughs> the architect of this new conservative order. Some his. I know you would be that type of peasant boy to do that. Oh, it's not even a peasant child. It's just I do that just for fun. Back in those times, uh. you've got to make your own fun. <laughs> so you're just going to pick up a head. Father, Are you going to shave may it? May I have a shilling? Why do you want a shilling for? I want to go buy a head. <laughs> oh, go on then. You'd give go me a shilling on. and then I'd go get the head for free and then use the shilling to buy mead. <laughs> you know, because that's what I'll do in them days. <laughs> and then I'd go play footy with my pals with a head. Are you going to shave it first? Make it a nice, easy, like, no. circular shape? I don't know. It makes it more fun, doesn't it? I don't know where it's going to end up. <laughs> Uh, you're a special type of special. The Metternich system. <laughs> and yet, across Europe, there are many for whom the ideals of the French Revolution remain not a nightmare, but an inspiration. Liberals seek personal freedoms and civil rights, such as equality before the law, Who's protected by constitutions, liberals. a free <laughs> press, and regular elections. <laughs> Not much to ask for, really, is it? <laughs> it's easy to ask for a head. <laughs> you just stick to your head, yeah? Share these aims in more with ways the desire than one. in Italy and Germany <laughs> for national unification, <laughs> or in the multi ethnic Austrian Empire for greater recognition, autonomy, and respect for language. Poles continue to seek the restoration of an independent Poland, and have launched one bloody uprising against the Russians in 1830. Their cause is supported by liberals across Europe. In most countries, liberals and nationalists face draconian censorship laws, arrest by the secret police, and bans on political parties and meetings. Mm. But there are always loopholes. In France, private banquets turn into political rallies. In Italy, scientific <laughs> societies discuss politics, while gymnastic groups do the same in Germany. Gymnastic groups? These liberal that's a, movements are dominated by the... That's a good cover. I mean, is it though? Like, what happens if you go to watch gymnastics and they're just there talking about politics and shit? But it's not It's going to be when you're training. Oh yeah, we've got gymnastic training. No one's going to come see you train, are they? They might do. Not if you don't invite them. Yeah, true. <laughs> oh, where are you going training? Oh, you don't need to know. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> Middle class, with their own local and national agendas, but also many shared values and aims. They are passionate, organised, and waiting for their opportunity. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like we're sleeping on a volcano at the moment in our political landscape. Uh, I think that relates real well, not just across Europe, but across the USA and Europe. I'd say, I'd say there's very, uh, there's an eruption oh, of boom. <laughs> oh, World War Three. Your country needs you! Yes, it does. But it isn't just the middle class. I don't think you'd make it change. In. 
By 1848, rising populations and food prices Commanding General created hunger, <laughs> poverty, and social unrest across Europe. My name will be whispered Europe. among the hills. <laughs> what hills? <laughs> what hills? The hills of the bodies of the dead enemies and the slain. <laughs> Come to the motherland. Ah, right, okay, you got me there. Capitan. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> Right, go lay down, go on. ...to cities in increasing numbers, where they become cheap labour to feed the growing pace of industrialization. They live in slums and work long hours in dreadful conditions, if they can find work. Violent protests by workers and peasants are on the rise. Mm. Harvest failures and potato blight make a bad situation worse, mm. with a deadly famine in Ireland and food riots across France. In the face of such crises, Europe's governments offer little support or hope of reform. When French Prime Minister Francois Guizot is ch That's always the problem. If there's no hope of reform, that's when it really erupts. Do you know what I mean? If you have that hope that it might change, then you, you're going to be okay. But if there's no hope, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's when I think it. it I guess really the government needs to feed people something to hope for, for them to keep going. Yeah, definitely. Challenged that only the richest half percent could vote in France, he merely replies, "Enrichissez-vous, get rich." Sharp economic downturn. Capitalism. Throws thousands game, more out of work. The game is the game. The case for reform is more urgent than ever. But Europe's governments fail to act. No shock, no change. Yeah. The stage is set for a European revolution. Ooh. In southern Italy, the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies is ruled by Spanish Bourbon King Ferdinand II. His disastrous agrarian reforms have united Sicilian landowners and peasants against him. Ooh. His kingdom, you have to be hated to unite two different mm. people In against Sicily, you. <clears throat> furious crowds chase Bourbon troops out of Palermo, and the island declares independence re-adopting its liberal constitution of 1812. Fair play. Revolutionary yep, fair play. fervor spreads to the mainland. Mass rallies in Naples force King Ferdinand to issue his own constitution. In Piedmont, Sardinia, the threat of revolution persuades King Carlo Alberto to grant a constitution, and there are celebrations in the streets of it Turin. happens to one and it all comes Across tumbling the border, down, do Austrian it? ruled yeah. Lombardy, Venetia, Italian nationalists revolt in Milan and Venice and drive out the Austrian garrisons. But as dramatic as these events are, they're about to be eclipsed by news from Paris. Mm -hmm. When France sleeps, <laughs> it catches a cold. <laughs> <laughs> Since Francis, <laughs> I, I, I've really done out about that. Go, go on, go. Viva la revolution. She has got some teeth, Jack. Yeah, she got very nice perky. I mean, I'm, I'm on the floor already, just looking up. <laughs> oh, you're there, yeah. yeah that's this is you. Oh, I don't know, I'm kind of debating myself between that guy and the guy with the hat there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, feel yeah. like he's um. He's got the, he's got the side tip. I don't and know. Us. I feel like she's clocked him looking at her, but he's just like I'm. I'm looking dead forward. I'm not angling my eyes. At I think all. he's about to get stepped on. So do you have a foot fetish? He is being stepped on. And maybe he does have a foot fetish. Oh no, he's laying this way. Where's his hand going? Uh, up her skirt. It looks like. Cheeky bastard. Yeah, cheeky bastard. I guess the French do the dark it like that. Not gonna lie, this kind of this guy has looked kind of funny just because he's got two pistols. <laughs> the country has been ruled by Louis Philippe. <laughs> so he doing the king. <laughs> he's a more moderate figure than his Bourbon predecessor. Looks like that next. But he opposes further reform <laughs> despite <laughs> the growing economic crisis. His oh prime minister, yeah, that would piss you off. Gizo, is hated. When he bans the banquets that are really opposition rallies, 
angry crowds march through Paris, mm. chanting, Down with Guizot, long live reform. Guizot resigns, but it is not enough. Nervous troops fire on the crowds. Mm. 52 civilians are killed. Louis-Philippe loses control of the capital, and as the mob advances on the Tuileries Palace, he abdicates and flees to England. Ah, they needed to buy the part there. <laughs> and from the Hotel de Ville, new foreign minister, up, minister Alphonse de Lamartine announces, the Republic has been proclaimed. France's monarchy has fallen in just three days. Just three right. The news days. is carried across Europe. Okay, so that in, a, would in, be right, in a situation like that, yeah, yeah, you've all rioted, you've all come in, and now you're like, right, we now have reform. What Yay! do we do? <laughs> Who's now going to be in charge? And now you're all fighting amongst yourself. Well, yeah. I'll do it. No, I'm doing it. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Well, now that's you've got the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem today. Now you've got that's rid. The thing. Yeah. Now you've got rid of the old people. Now you've got to find new people. <laughs> now the new people have got to fight it amongst themselves because they force all the old people out, and now they've got to fight each other to figure out who's then going to take charge. And then it's just going to go around in a fucking cycle every I know. fucking years. I know. This is my biggest worry at this point in time: is people want a revolution. It feels like people want a revolution. People Bring back want the gunpowder plot. Bring <laughs> people back the want to change. Back. The government, the but they don't know what they want to do after because communism ain't great. I don't want to go to communism. Capitalism, I agree, isn't the best, but it is working. That yeah. folks forever. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we, we could we could have really have done some shit, man. What? I mean, what what I mean, it would be an interesting scenario if what Guy would? Fawkes was a, a today situation. Guy Fawkes, yeah, blows up Parliament, but in 2023. No, because what are we going to do after? You literally just said, no, no, what are we no, no, going to do exactly after? That's what I'm saying. So what would happen if Guy Fawkes happened in a 2023 scenario? What the fuck do we do then? It would be... All the taxpayers' the money thing. is going to go to, to rebuilding Westminster. <laughs> Big Ben, <laughs> again. <laughs> exactly, it's a waste of time. And Rishi Sunak's going to fill his fucking pockets. Crick. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> by the new telegraph system. Ooh. The effect is electrifying. Uh, get it? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> 75-year-old Austrian Chancellor Prince Metternich is among the first to be informed of the revolution in Paris. His police chief assures him there's no chance of such a thing happening in Vienna. <laughs> no on chance. On the 13th of March, around 4,000 students, inspired by the news from Paris, march on <laughs> the Landhaus, the assembly building, and force their way in. Blimey. There's a confrontation with troops who open fire and kill four. Vienna's workers side with the students. Oh. Much of the crowd's wow. hostility is directed at Metternich. When the State Council okay. suggests he resign, Metternich meekly agrees and heads into exile in England. Mm. One of the most extraordinary political careers in Europe's history, just spanning ended. 40 years, comes to an end. It really just all come toppling down one after Emperor the other. Emperor Ferdinand suffers from epilepsy and a speech impediment, and is a largely passive figure. But when his council announces there will be elections for an assembly that will draft a constitution, crowds cheer him in the street. Mm. The secret police disappear. Censorship is ignored. The people of Vienna celebrate. Mm -hmm. wow. Nationalists within the Austrian Empire are also inspired by events. In the Hungarian parliament, politician Lajos Kossuth makes a fiery speech denouncing Habsburg absolutism as the pestilential air which dulls our nerves and paralyzes our spirit. His speech is printed and circulated widely, inspiring others across the empire. <laughs> Hungarians <laughs> launch their own revolution, with 12 demands that include greater autonomy, a free press, and parliamentary reform. Czech liberals in Prague form a national committee and also send their demands to Vienna. There is even a Romanian nationalist uprising in the Ottoman province of Wallachia. 
mm. forcing the abdication of the local prince. People back then seemed to get on a lot easier when there was hard time struggles. Like when shit like that go on, everyone kind of knew what they wanted and they all kind of worked together to get it. Um, like the revolutions and that, everyone wanted change. So what no, it, and then it was like, yeah, because it was, was like a dumb that was a, that was a, that was not people working together. That was no, 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 not individual with... groups having the same idea and the same. Yeah, but all doing the same thing. You but, feel me? They all want change. But they didn't. They didn't send letters to each other. No, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying they did. I'm not saying they did. But they all individually did want the same thing, which is change. But and not everyone, no. But it was only that. the students in Austria, and then some of the workers um, changed. Yeah, but, I but don't all think the other revolutions as well. I'm not just on about that one particularly. Everyone was revolting because they all wanted change. Not everyone, but most. I would agree. Um, I wouldn't say that it happens all the time. That was a. That was. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it happens yeah. all the time, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's crazy that back then they could all kind of everyone knew what they wanted to do. Things could get done like they they send the message, you know, and everyone's understanding that we need to change what's going on. And today's world, not a fucking hope in hell. No, I do think there is a hope in hell. Yeah? Yeah, I've, I, I've said multiple times through this this video that I think we're we're sitting on... We're sitting on a landslide, mate, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's... Well, we'll I, think, I think one of the most... I don't know, I think a civil war in America could very much happen. Hmm. And that's what you're talking about. You're talking about... That's interesting. Yeah, I think a civil war is the most likely thing to. to Do you reckon cause. an American civil war? Not American, but just a civil war in general. I don't know. Just I feel like I just feel like people are not happy. People have not been happy for long enough, and it is mm. building up. That's what I think, but I don't know. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's. I think I think people are not happy. That's why the political landscape is so polarized at the moment. People are like people aren't willing to say, like, like people on the left say they're the most accepting thing, but. They're not willing to let people do what they want to do. They have to force their pick their yeah. ideas on other people, you know. Um, whereas I think most people are literally of the mindset of, well, you can just do what you want to do. Just don't come into my life. Mm. Do you know what I mean I don't care what like unless you're unless I want to be your friend and I want to pay attention to your lifestyle. If I don't care about you then what you do behind closed doors is none of my business and I don't care. And what I do behind closed doors is none of my business and I don't care. So as long as you don't come over here and start implementing your ideas on me, then I don't care. But the moment people start implementing their ideas on other people, which it really feels like today, mm. that both right and left are really trying to forcefully put their ideas on people instead of just going this is where we stand and this is where we stand you guys choose you can even come to this side and this side it feels like both sides are trying to convert people at the moment and there's just lots and lots of pressure mm. uh, and I don't think people are happy and I feel like yeah yeah, okay. yeah that's that's how I'd explain it but yeah Across the smaller states of Germany, rulers face popular demands for reform. Most quickly grant concessions to avoid losing their thrones. The black, red and gold tricolour, symbol of a united Germany, is prominent among the crowds. Nice. Germany's first ever National Assembly meets in Frankfurt, with elected mm. delegates from across Germany. They debate how they will achieve the liberal dream of a unified Germany there you go. and begin drafting its national constitution. That's how it's done, Jack. In the Prussian I'll capital, your question Berlin, there, yeah. <laughs> students and liberals are thrilled by developments and celebrate Metternich's fall. King Frederick William IV promises reform, but also moves extra troops into the city. Tensions escalate between Berliners and soldiers and on the 18th of March, protesters erect barricades. The army attacks, leading to vicious fighting in the streets. 
800 mm. protesters are killed. The king loses his stomach for the slaughter and withdraws troops from the city, promising a new constitution. Too late though, 800 lives wasted. Yeah, you, you slaughter 800 and then your stomach goes, yeah, maybe that wasn't a good idea. Because you still weren't winning. Not all Europe is embracing change. Should saddle your horses, France In Russia, Emperor Nicholas firmly opposes any reforms. He'd been badly shaken by the Decembrist revolt on the opening day of his reign. Since then, he has tightened censorship and created a new secret police unit, the Third Department. There Sounds is a so crackdown on all suspected subversives. Know. Writer Fyodor Dostoevsky is among those arrested and subjected to a mock execution before he is exiled to Siberia. Oh. There will be no I'm fucking concession. sorry. You put my man through a mock execution <laughs> and then sent him to Siberia. I think he would have been like, "Could you have just fuck executed off. me?" Fuck off! There was a dug hole in front of these lads who were trying to pose with a hood over their head in yeah, front of a firing squad. Yeah. God and the it. bullets go off like they fire up in the air or next to him. Yeah, 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 and yeah, it's yeah just like, Right now, you're off to Siberia. I'm no, nah, bro. Change my clothes first. It's <laughs> not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> nah, cause I'd be like, just put the bullet in my head. Fuck Siberia. I'd, I'd probably just tell one of those. Uh, Fuck going to the gulag in Siberia. Start abusing your firing squads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your, your mother's mother a whore. <laughs> we both went for your the Your father. Wo your father smelled of elderberries. <laughs> oh. In Russia. By European standards, Britain is already a liberal, constitutional monarchy, and the middle classes broadly accept the status quo. But there is a popular movement calling for more democratic reforms. They're known as the Chartists, for the six-point charter they wish to implement. A mass rally is organised. Votes for all men over 21. I think that's kind of fair. Secret ballouts. Okay. Um, Ballots. Uh, voting ballots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. No property qualification for MPs. Uh, okay, I see. I see. So if you want to become an MP, you don't need property qualifications. Payment of MPs, I'm assuming. To You have to pay in to become an MP, maybe? Mm, yeah, I'm assuming. Well, maybe you've got to contribute a certain amount. Yeah, equal const uh, constitutions, yeah. that's fair, annual, annual parliaments, parliaments. Yeah. fair. For the 10th of April in London. This is a photograph of that meeting. Fuck, holy the shit. The authorities fear violence and draft in 80,000 extra police. 80,000! <laughs> passes off peacefully. In the See, that's how we do it. King yeah, William man, we can stand around and we can just chat, chill, and, chill <laughs> and then walk away. Preempting any revolutionary but yeah. if it was a football team matter, oh, there'd Jesus be a fight. Christ, don't <laughs> if everyone's American, right, and you want to go to a British football game, don't. You go to a Millwall game <laughs> and you shout, "Fuck you, Millwall!" <laughs> Fuck yours, Millwall, right? That and basically what that means is you're embracing Millwall right so go to a Millwall game if you're American go to a Millwall soccer game which is football it's actually called football not football where you run around with that's rugby but we do it more violent than you lot I mean I don't know what you lot do but you no know. that was an incorrect statement yeah yeah no that you, was an incorrect statement yeah 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 he even oh, goes I don't know what you guys do <laughs> secondary school rugby was a lot more violent let's be honest I mean contact Bulldog bruv you're 7 and 8 yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 that was. but back onto the back onto the mill wall so you, you anyway you, yeah. yeah any American so the football go, is, is, is built with to, foot here so ball with foot, foot, foot yeah, here. Ball with foot, yeah. Ball with foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the Americans, so you come here, you go to a game, ball with foot, Millwall versus whoever, and to embrace the Millwall fans, what do you do, Jack? <laughs> go ahead, Jack. You tell Millwall. <laughs> oh God! Just go and enjoy it for yourselves, guys. You'll really love it. I couldn't even finish it. <laughs> with fortuitous timing, uh, Frederick the Seventh oh, of don't Denmark spoil it for them. abolished royal absolutism in January, so he uh, also avoids revolution. 
I love Chad. Party faces a German oh, nationalist well, revolt in Schleswig-Holstein, so fun. which leads to war with the German Confederation. If I let him Denmark speak more, will ultimately <laughs> prevail in this war <laughs> thanks to problem. diplomatic support. Yeah, I keep mine in locked away in the closet. <laughs> mine got out of the box a few years ago. <laughs> In 1848, Polish <laughs> hopes were high that these revolutions would pave the way for the restoration of an independent Poland. No, that Russian Empire. Europe's liberals, yeah. after all, had frequently expressed enthusiasm for the idea. But in reality, no major power is willing to risk confrontation with Russia <laughs> for the sake of the Poles. A Polish rising in Posen is put down by the Prussians while the Austrians deal with risings in Krakow and Galicia. Oh, okay. The secret promise The first euphoric of phase of the European revolutions becomes known as the springtime of the peoples. With censorship relaxed, there's an explosion in the number of newspapers. Among them, Cologne's radical new daily, Neue Rheinischer Zeitung, edited sun. by Karl <laughs> Marx. <laughs> the it feels like the dawn of a new era. What's the one you get on the train? But these early free? successes are built on the, the back metro? of an metro. uneasy <laughs> alliance, as Marx is quick to highlight. Middle-class liberals want constitutions, yeah. more inclusion in politics, and a free press. Right. Workers, who are the revolutionary foot soldiers in many mm -hmm. cities, want cheaper food yep. and the right to work. Yeah. Yeah. German radicals sum it up with a neat pun. Freedom to read versus freedom to feed. Mm, Europe's new assemblies are under mm. pressure from conservatives who think they're going too far and radicals and socialists who think they're not going far enough. How do you strike the balance? Most horrifying of all yeah. to Europe's middle class there hovers the threat of mass direct action, social revolution, the mob. Mm. Is it is it scary? Is it scary today? Bread or lead? Said last time. Oh, <laughs> bread or lead? Yeah. In the wake That's of scary. The <laughs> France's provisional government had set up national workshops a public works program to alleviate unemployment in Paris. Okay. But just three months later, a new, more conservative government announces their closure. Oh, 100,000 mm. workers are suddenly jobless. Oh, the response is immediate and furious. Oh, that might, what were you thinking? Yeah, what were you thinking? Days in June, nah, you Paris instantly going to cause take like on the middle class national guard and regular troops. A hundred thousand men are on the barricades. The Archbishop of Paris attempts to mediate, but is cut down in a crossfire. Oh. <laughs> this remarkable early photograph shows some of the Paris barricades fought over that summer. Oh, oh shit. That's crazy. By the time it's all over... You imagine... Right now, we're having to, like, secure... And just go down to each end, make oh, uh, barricades, Christ. like all of these, yeah, make more barricades. Just push something further, like two feet further, just to get extra, and you're just getting obliterated. Like, like we 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 get fucking done, and then we're having to go all slowly make our way up to to fucking yeah. I'm gonna edit all those those road names out, but yeah. <laughs> 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 you never know. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. That's going to be long. Yeah, someone actually did that on TikTok or something. They, oh, uh, they do. They do. Was, uh, Doxing guy, is they real. Like, oh, yeah, Doxing we found real. out your real height. Yeah, and yeah. He was like, what? And oh, they, they can like, find all that. Of, like, the fucking oh, okay. level of uh, <laughs> windows and shit and the door handle. And they turned out this guy's like four foot something. This is why I said to you, cuz, do you want me to use an alias? <laughs> but no. <laughs> Yeah, you start burning my name out, but it don't really matter. Yeah. I don't care. Bro. I don't care either. The fuck am I gonna do? You <laughs> can't fraud me bank like financially. I'm broke. Okay. We're broke. We've got nothing. Nothing. Yeah. You're gonna give us if we got mugged, they'd feel sorry for us. Get your money out, bro. Go to a cash point, mate. Let me see how much I owe the bank. <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's uh, rough. <laughs> it's rough. General <laughs> have killed at least 1,500 workers. 1,500 workers were killed. A third of whom are deported oh, to Algeria. Oh my God. He believes he yeah. saved France did. from anarchy. The sacred cause <laughs> of the he? Republic has triumphed, he declares. Nah, brother. The French Revolution has split between left and right, with bloody consequences. Mm. It paves the way for the return He's of a famous opinions. name from the past. Well, not all. Promising the unity and order. Nice. Three days of blood will give us 30 years of peace. That spring, conservative governments had been caught off guard by the speed of events. Oh. Now they begin it to fight It was rapid. Yeah. In Prague, Czech students clash with troops. The wife of Austrian commander General Windisch Gretz is killed by a stray bullet. He responds by withdrawing his troops and bombarding the city's old town with artillery. <coughs> ah, what shame for the architecture. Before the students surrender. In Italy, King Carlo Alberto of Piemont Sardinia has declared an Damn. Italian war of liberation yeah, against Austria. <laughs> Wouldn't you be? I would he be. Is supported by the other Italian states and nationalist volunteers, including the Italian Legion, led by professional Whoa. revolutionary Giuseppe <laughs> Garibaldi. A fucking massive force. Austrian forces in Italy are commanded by 81 year old <laughs> Field Marshal Radetzky, a distinguished veteran of the Napoleonic Wars. <laughs> Vienna orders him to negotiate. Instead, Radetzky wages a masterful campaign, fending off the Piedmontese advance, then launching a decisive counterattack. Piedmontese forces retreat in disarray, and Carlo Alberto negotiates a truce. Oh. That summer, Johann Strauss composes the Radetzky March to celebrate the old general's hmm. victory. Meanwhile, Austrian relations with Hungary are in crisis. The country is now effectively independent, with its own elected parliament and a prime minister, Lajos Batyani. Oh, well then. But not everyone wants to be part of the new Hungary. Mm. Savage ethnic conflicts break out between Hungarians and Romanians in Transylvania and Hungarians and Serbs in Vojvodina. I'm assuming this is like, this, this is looking like how we're gonna get majority of the borders that we have today, mm. or definitely a very similar um, res resemblance yeah. to it. Um, for then, obviously, uh, maybe a few more countries later on in the line to gain more independence. But I definitely think we're gonna sort of get a very similar, um, yeah. leaving thousands dead. To what we have today, An even impressive. greater threat is Croatian General Josip Jelacic a fire-breathing imperial loyalist who takes matters into his own hands and invades what he regards yeah, he as a like renegade some province. He just looks like some pissed-off British general. The emperor <laughs> still hopes for a peaceful resolution Austrian and sends general. a loyal yeah, general, no, he's got Count British Lamberg, tank. to take command of Hungarian military forces. But on arrival, he's brutally murdered by a mob. Oh. Appalled, the imperial government declares Peak. war on the Hungarian Revolution. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, oh, my. This, in turn, outrages liberals and radicals in Vienna. There is fresh violence on the streets, and the Austrian Minister of War is lynched. Troops evacuate the city, while the Emperor <laughs> flees to Olmutz. Jelacic marches to the government's aid. He joins forces with Vindish Greats outside Vienna, and together they bombard the city. Holy then shit. Then they attack. The October Rising is crushed, with the loss of 2,000 lives. Damn. Damn indeed. 25 revolutionary leaders are executed, including Robert Blum, a member of the German parliament in Frankfurt. He becomes a celebrated martyr of the revolutions. Mm. 
With Vienna secure, the Austrian yeah. invasion of Hungary yeah, can begin. Really did pave a way for what the Hungarians are heavily Why outnumbered. They just stood on the fucking hilltop Budapest and falls, and the Hungarian government evacuates yeah. to Debrecen. Following the violence in, the in Berlin that yeah. March, <laughs> the King of Prussia withdraws to his palace at Potsdam, on the outskirts of the city. Here he is surrounded by loyal troops and conservative advisers, including a 33-year-old aristocrat named Otto von Bismarck. When asked for his view on what should be done, Bismarck says nothing, but leans over to a piano, and taps out the March of the Prussian Infantry. <laughs> the forces of conservatism are strong in Prussia. Big dick. There is deep loyalty to the state. He's just flat the his cock out on a table. Allies, like Bismarck, Cross adopt the, the enemy's tactics, <laughs> launching conservative <laughs> political organizations and newspapers to mobilize this support. Uh, By November, King Frederick William has noted the infighting of his opponents and the defeat of the Vienna Revolution, and decides to act. He orders General Wrangel to lead 13,000 troops into Berlin. Mm -hmm. They enter the city unopposed, and order the Prussian assembly to disperse. It has no option but to comply. Prussia will get its constitution, but it is one handed down by the king, under which he retains full executive power. Oh, that's Prussian big. dreams of a true parliamentary system, even a republic, are dashed. Mm -hmm. In December, two new players take the stage, who will play key roles in shaping the fate of Europe's revolutions. In <clears throat> Vienna, Emperor Ferdinand abdicates in favour of his 18-year-old nephew, Franz Josef. He will reign until his death in 1916. Okay. In Paris, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, <laughs> nephew of Emperor Napoleon, is elected President of the French Republic in a landslide victory. Cool. Yeah, brother. He promises to heal divisions, impose order, and restore France to her former mm. glory. Mm. With the name Bonaparte, you can get quite far. Oh my fucking god, these ads, brother. I normally have my ad blocker on, but not this time. Dead. Um, yeah, I'll watch it. I'm pretty sure I've watched a video about um, Louis Bonaparte. Um, yeah, yeah, having Bonaparte in your name can get you a lot of, yeah. a lot of sway in, in a parliament, I think. than the Bourbon troops. In mm. Italy, the tumult continues into 1849. In the Papal States, the reforms of Pope Pius had seen him held up as an unlikely liberal role model. But escalating radicalism and violence, notably the assassination of his justice minister, Pellegrino Rossi, caused Pope Pius to flee Rome. Oh. In his absence, <laughs> the throne. Roman Republic is declared. It is led by Giuseppe Mazzini, the iconic figurehead of Italian nationalism, who's devoted his life to the unification of his homeland. Mm. But elsewhere, the Italian cause fares badly. Carlo Alberto resumes his war with Austria, with disastrous consequences. At the Battle of Novara, Radetzky inflicts another heavy defeat. Carlo Alberto abdicates in favour of his son, Vittorio Emanuele, to avoid a republican revolution. Twelve years later, he'll become the first king of a modern united Italy. Ooh, in the strong. south, Ferdinand reverts to absolutist rule and sends to Sicily to stamp out the revolution. Then, to the dismay of liberals across Europe, French President Louis Napoleon sends troops to crush the Republic of Rome and put the Pope back on his throne. He has decided the support of French Catholics is more important to him 
than the fate of Italian Republicans. Mm, interesting. French forces are led by General Udino, son of the famous Marshal. Rome's defenders are led by Garibaldi. But despite <laughs> skilled and courageous <laughs> resistance, Rome is forced to surrender after a two-month siege. That summer, Radetzky also retakes Venice and puts an end oh, to not its looking republic. Good for a united Italy, in March, it? the German National Parliament in Frankfurt had finally agreed on a constitution <clears throat> for a united Germany. It is to be a constitutional monarchy under an emperor. The man intended to play this role is Frederick William of Prussia. So when he declines the offer, the plan is killed stone dead. Oh, okay. In public, he says it is impossible without the consent of the other German princes. In private, he says he would never accept a crown from the gutter, disgraced by the stink of revolution. Ooh, okay. Revolts in Unlike support of the national constitution <laughs> break out in Saxony, the Palatinate, and the Grand Duchy of Baden. They are crushed by local forces, assisted by Prussian troops. The Frankfurt Parliament itself is dissolved. What hope mm. there had been for a united Germany under a liberal constitution lies in ruins. What a shame. In Austria, the new Emperor Franz Josef issues his own new constitution, reclaiming almost all political power. He also revokes all the liberal reforms passed by the Hungarian parliament, known as the April Laws. In response, Lajos Kossuth declares formal Hungarian independence, and the country begins an extraordinary campaign of military mobilization. Understandable. Hungarian commander General Gergely retakes Budapest. He then launches a bloody assault on Buda Castle overpowering its Austrian garrison. Mm. In desperation, the Austrian Emperor travels to Warsaw to formally request military aid from the Emperor of Russia. Does he get it? Russian he troops have already moved into Moldavia oh, and does. then Wallachia to put down the Romanian liberal revolution. Nicholas now agrees to send troops to Hungary to crush those he describes as the enemies of order and tranquility. Mm. Hungary faces an impossible strategic situation. It is about surrounded to be and outnumbered more than two to one. Poked. <laughs> the combined onslaught <laughs> is irresistible. Sides. The Hungarian forces are driven south and finally forced to surrender. Oh, oh they had no chance. In the aftermath, around 120 Hungarian politicians and army officers are executed. So ends Hungary's War of Independence. It does look like it had slipped right through their fingers. Yeah. Here, 1848 was a year like no other. A series of seismic political events following one upon another like falling dominoes. But what had been achieved? A British historian famously described 1848 as the turning point at which modern history <laughs> failed to turn. <laughs> and for all the euphoria we of Europe's well. springtime of the peoples, by 1849 it seemed that the counter-revolutionaries had won everywhere. <clears throat> but some gains did endure such as the abolition of serfdom in Austria and the popular vote in France, though France became a little less democratic in 1852, after Louis Napoleon made himself emperor. <laughs> Following Across his dad. Europe, governments modernised <laughs> and it paid was. more attention to economic and social Following issues, part. partly in response to the new challenges that had emerged from socialist <laughs> and working class politics. The causes of German and Italian unification had been defeated, mm. but made giant strides and learned crucial lessons. Their goals would not be achieved by ideas alone, but the realities of force. In the words of Bismarck, the great questions of the day were to be settled 
not through speeches and majority decisions, but a by iron action. and blood. Oh, okay. It would be wars waged by powerful monarchies that united Germany and Italy. The legacy mm. of 1848, for good and ill, would be felt for decades to come. Well then, what another great video by Epic History TV. Lovely. I thought uh, the revolts were going to do more. Yep. Um, so it was interesting to see how they all got put down so quick. Um, but obviously I do think that it was a domino effect and it did have later, later on repercussions, definitely, for sure. Definitely. Mm. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Jack definitely did. We hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. If you did, you know what to do. If you haven't already, head over to Epic History TV's channel. That link's in the description box down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will catch you in the next video. Peace, peace.